Grace, peace, and every welcome to you. We're so pleased that you are joining us here at St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Nashville, Tennessee. We are celebrating uh, the season of Eastertide, and in our tradition, Easter is more than just one day, the day when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. It's an entire succession of Sundays, lasting until Pentecost, uh, which is known as the birth of the church, some 40 days out. We're glad that you are here. We are, again, celebrating Holy Eucharist. If you have a book of common prayer, you can join us and follow along there on right to. You can also follow along online. Again, bienvenidos a todos, and grace and peace and joy be yours as we worship together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they now profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
The First Lesson, Acts 4, 32-35 Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses, sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The psalm for today is Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. The epistle for today is from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord o'er all the earth. He is the King of creation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing praise to has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, sing praise to his name. Come, let us praise the living God. Joyfully sing to our Savior. Thank 
thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, singing praise to his name. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. While it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. My friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If I were to mention the name Judas to you, your immediate thought might be betrayer. If I were to say the name Simon Peter, some of us might immediately think, impulsive, brash, maybe passionate. If I were to say the name Matthew, there are some who would think a tax collector. But when I say the name Thomas, there is little question as to the word most everyone would write down. It would be the word doubt. In fact, so closely have we associated Thomas with this story and with that word, we've, we have a shorthand phrase in English, a doubting Thomas. And a, it's a word that we use across all kinds of different contexts. Oh, he's a doubting Thomas, or she's just a doubting Thomas, that's all. That's her problem. It's interesting that in the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we are told absolutely nothing about Thomas. It's only in the Gospel of John that that Thomas kind of emerges from the shadows and, and becomes a distinct personality. Even then, we only have 155 words about 
Thomas. There's not a lot about him in the Bible, but I know that there, and I'm convinced there is more to him than just his doubt. Now, about Thomas, we need to rewind the events of Holy Week just a bit. After three years of ministry, crisscrossing Judea, Palestine, just as Jesus begins his final journey into Jerusalem, where he will be arrested and executed, many of his disciples believed and thought that that would also mean certain death for them. And it frightened them. Surprisingly, according to John, again, which is our only source for Thomas, really, surprisingly, it was Thomas, the doubter, who said, then let us go so that we may die with him. It was a courageous statement. And yet we don't remember Thomas the Courageous. And in today's story of Thomas, we have the one place in all the Gospels where the divinity of Christ is unequivocally and bluntly and blatantly stated when Thomas says, my Lord and my God. The story, the same story that gives Thomas his infamous nickname of Doubter is the same story that has Thomas making this earth-shattering, world-changing confession of faith. And what about those words of Thomas? What about his confession? My Lord and my God. They sound like words spoken with utter conviction. Without doubt, they certainly do not sound like the words of one who is uncertain or who has, is unconvinced or who still has doubt. Unfortunately, history has remembered him for the scene where the resurrected Christ makes an appearance to the disciples at a home in Jerusalem and Thomas was not present when he heard and when he heard about the event, he refused to believe it. Maybe. Maybe Thomas was by nature just a cynic. Many are. Maybe the news sounded just too good to be true. I don't think we can blame him for that. Thomas said, unless I feel the nail prints in his hand, I will not believe. Thomas had somehow missed that first resurrection appearance, but the second time Jesus comes to his followers, Thomas was there, and this time he too found himself in the presence of the resurrected Jesus, and this time he believed. It's also interesting and I think instructive for us as disciples that Jesus did not blame Thomas for doubting he did not excoriate him. He did not criticize him or berate him. Contrast that with much of church history. So often the church's handling of people who doubt is to couple it with disbelief. Well, if you doubt, then you, you don't believe. You're, and they try to stamp it out. But Jesus never condemned Thomas, not one time. I must admit, I am a little wary when someone says they never have any doubts. I'm a little unsure about people who always seem so sure that's a very high bar to set. I don't have any doubts. I believe it all. On the cross, Jesus himself cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
you might say that at a given moment in time, even Jesus Christ had doubts. Maybe even the faith of Jesus in God's abiding presence wavered at that moment in time. It may be true, let's put it another way, it may be that honest doubt is in fact essential for authentic faith. Faith is not a, a zero sum game. Just because doubt is present doesn't mean that faith cannot also be present. They don't eclipse each other. They can coexist, cohabitate, if you will. I'm thinking of the, of the words of the poet Tennyson who wrote, there lives more faith in honest doubt than in half the creeds. You and I may find ourselves crying out as Peter did, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Could it be that doubt is, is a powerful tool that can propel us into a deeper faith, into a deeper learning and understanding, into, a, into soul searching, and ultimately into greater illumination and a more rooted faith and practice of our faith. Many, many, many believers struggle with doubts that come on to them as a result of life's challenges. And we may wonder, as those challenges come, where is God to be found? We might be tempted, we might be tempted to look for inspiration to spiritual giants to help us, those superstars of the faith who, who will somehow infuse us with energy and faith and, and, and banish our doubts. We might be tempted to look for inspiration there. However, the greatest in the kingdom also sometimes deal with the greatest doubt. One of the most revered saints in the church, Catholic, Protestant, Anglican, is Mother Teresa, or was Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and apparently she struggled mightily with doubt. Mother Teresa kept a diary for decades, and her diary, which came to light after her death, reveals a compassionate and saintly person who struggled with just the kind of doubt that would crush the faint of heart. Teresa wrote to one of her good friends, and confidants, she wrote, Jesus has a very special love for you. As for me, the silence and the emptiness is so great that I look and do not see, listen and do not hear. It seems that for the last half century of her life, Teresa felt no presence of God whatsoever, whether neither in her heart nor in the Eucharist, and, and curiously enough, that absence of God seems to have started just about precisely at the time when she began tending to the poor and the dying in Calcutta. And according to her journal, except for about a five-week period in 1959, that sense of absence never went away. Always cheerful in public, and upbeat, Mother Teresa apparently lived her life in a state of abiding and deep spiritual pain. She bemoans her dryness, her darkness, her loneliness and the torture she was undergoing still. It, still she carried on with her work. At one point she said it, it drove her to doubt the very existence of heaven and maybe even of God. My sisters and brothers, I think it can be said clearly that faith, the life of faith, is a daily ongoing exercise 
and is always a bit of a risk. Doubts arise. We struggle with God. We struggle with circumstances that, that threaten to overwhelm us. But hopefully, a faith grounded or begun or rooted in a notion of the goodness of God will help us to keep on even when we don't have the answers, even when life doesn't make sense, even when we, we may have doubts and be afraid. Speaking of faith and the life of faith, probably the most famous verse in the whole scripture, all of scripture is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. The author of that book writes, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Well, I can certainly tell that the person who wrote that sentence was educated in a Greek manner. Why? Because it sounds like a, a dictionary definition to me. Clean and crisp and concise and discreet, just the facts. But the truth is faith is not clean and discreet and precise nor is faith easily defined. Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth schooled in the Hebrew tradition, rarely handed out definitions. He told stories instead. The Hebrews had a very different way of thinking about faith and about doubt. They do not view them as enemies, as antithetical. Like Blessed Teresa, the faith stories of the Old Testament reveal that even those great saints had their moments of deep faith and paralyzing doubt, times of both certainty and despair. The reformer Martin Luther made the observation that each one of us is, in his words, equal parts sinner and saint. I'm going to push that out a little bit farther and confess to you that some days I am equal parts doubt and certainty. Perhaps you are too. We must simply keep on, keep walking the pilgrimage that is faith. And as we do, my prayer is that each of us may think more, may think of doubt more as an ally, as a companion in the journey, than as an enemy. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
people are formed for. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, and Cristobal, Bishop of Littoral Ecuador, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth your true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Bartholomew's, Nashville. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations, especially Joe, the President of the United States, and Kamala, Vice President of the United States, Congress, the Supreme Court, and the Governor of Tennessee, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for the men and women serving our country in the armed forces, Casey Feather, Robert Higgins, Michael House, Caleb Dozier, Dalton Branson, and Peyton Downs. For our postulant for holy orders, Charlie McLean and his family. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays, especially Tucker Bach. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially the family of Joe Whitker, Isla O'Brien, Charlie Brown, Nikki May, the Franklin family. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom, especially for Steve Rice, father of Patrick Rice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. La paz del Señor sea siempre ustedes. Peace, peace, peace. Peace to all of you out there. Peace to our techni technical crew in the choir loft. So grateful for them. And that'll just begin our announcement time. Thanks to Chuck Hardy and Matt Bach uh, for putting this whole service together, uh, stitching it together every week, as you will, if you will. We thank you, uh, uh, Kathy and Dan Cochran, for serving at the altar, for our music director, Matt, for our lectors, uh, and for everyone who behind the scenes. So there, and there are so many uh, who coordinate readers and coordinate the bulletins. We're, we're so grateful for you and couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to invite you to make your pledge uh, to this church for 2021. We have received at last count only about half the pledges that we typically receive in a given year. Our treasurer, financial advisor, Mike Hagens, has authorized me to tell you if you'd like to pledge to the church for 2021, you can send him an email with your pledge on it. 
he will print it out, record it, and then destroy it. And keep, well, he'll keep a, keep, keep a copy in his file, that's what it is, and then destroy the original and write down the amount. Uh, so it really helps us to plan our ministry for the year and how we're going to proceed and how we're, how we're going to, in which directions we're going to move uh, to know what everybody is pledging. So you can do that, as I said, by an email. Mike, uh, you, if you need Mike's email address, just uh, text, call, or email the church and we'll send that to you. That would be a blessing to us. I want to tell you this past week, uh, I joined the club. I got myself a second vaccine uh, from the Pfizer Corporation. And thanks be to God, uh, it's, it's been a long time coming. Um, had to drive to Clarksville twice to do this, but I was glad to do it. And uh, I would, I would um, encourage all of you to do the same. The sooner we do this, the sooner more of us get vaccinated uh, and are, are safer, not totally out of the woods, but safer, the sooner we can get back to in-person worship. And speaking of that, don't forget, we have drive-in worship or car park worship at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. You simply drive up right here in the parking lot of St. Philip's Church and we celebrate communion there. We also have midweek Eucharist here in the chapel at St. Philip's at 1 o'clock p.m. every Thursday. Just a spoken liturgy. Uh, we also have the daily office, Mondays at 8 a.m., Fridays at 8 a.m., and then that's morning prayer. Compline is on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Just remember, it's like the Weather Channel. Remember, on the 8s, 8 on Monday, 8 on Friday, 8 p.m. on Wednesday. We'd love to have you join us. We are also having our, our, third, our third walkabout coming up. And uh, location still to be determined, but I'm thinking it may be at the, uh, the skate park, no, the water park, I'm sorry, the water park so we can walk across the bridge over the Cumberland. A lot of people would like to do that. So stay tuned, check your St. Philip's happenings, and keep abreast of all that is happening here at the church, and there is much going on. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. Bring us to that heavenly country where with Saint Philip and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. Those who my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me and I in them my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed says the Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Bread of heaven. My brother, this is the body of Christ, bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, cup of salvation. Blood of Christ, cup of salvation. of Christ and bread of heaven. Thank you, Matt, for that coda to our liturgy tonight. In him there is no darkness at all. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. 
To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. My friends, the peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.